Welcome back. Here is a program. It's ASM.exe. I just wrote it um, in Dev C++. And if you want to see the code, it looks like this. Uh, you can get this compiler from, from bloodshed.net. It's free. And uh, the reason I wrote this is we're going to use it to uh, learn some assembly. And all that I wrote is message box and then a whole bunch of NOPs, no operations. That's all the program does. Um, I'll, ho I'll host that so you guys can download it. And uh, then you will be able to follow along a little bit easier because that last crack me that I told you to use for the last tutorial was crap. So, uh, let's go ahead and uh, open that in Ollie. And it doesn't look like a message box and a bunch of NOPs right here. That's because somewhere within this call, and then probably one of these other calls, or a jump, we probably end up on our code. Well, I know we end up on our code. Somewhere before this exit, probably on this jump. Or, yep, there we go. Our code starts right here. As you can see, I'll do an analyze. You see a message box and then a whole bunch of NOPs. So if we put a breakpoint right here and run it, we're going to stop right there. Um, now, you don't see any pushes, and that's because the way that that compiler does a message box, and probably most, um, instead of doing push, 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 it moves to ESP and it works itself backwards. So it's going to, if you watch the stack, it puts zeros there. Then it's going to put the caption, the message, zeros. And now it's going to call message box. And then we're going to land, we see a message box, and we land on sub ESP10. And that's because it's going to put us back up to where we were before we did that call. And we are. Um, it's acceptable, but look at how many bytes it used. And wait till you see how much we save. Push zero. Well, there's a bunch. Take this offset. Push offset. Didn't look like much. But, uh, it is. Trust me. Push that offset. Push zero. Now we need to call message box. And, uh, we don't need to do sub ESP. And these can all be set to NOPs. So we saved all that. And if we analyze, it's exactly the same thing. And if we go ahead and save this, edit, copy to executable, exit, yes, open, yes. Now if we restart and go back down to our code, which is right here, and put a breakpoint, it's going to act exactly the same. And it did. So, uh, that's one plus to knowing assembly. It's more efficient. It's always going to be more efficient, uh, unless you code it wrong. <laughs> and now, um, let's go ahead and have it run that message box four times. Well, first we need to move these, edit. binary copy, and we're going to go down, edit, binary paste. If you notice, this doesn't say message box anymore. That's because when you do a binary copy, uh, Ollie tries to fix it, and it changes the relative addresses. But that's not a relative address. It's always going to be there. So now we have these two bytes here. And what I'm going to put there is XOR ESI ESI. And you've seen that before. 
I've told you that it clears ESI, but really what it does is a logical mathematic uh, operation. If ESI is 101011, one, 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 uh, if you XOR those, you get 000. zero, zero. The reason being, let's say you have a number that is 101011, one, one, and then you have a number that is 111001. Zero, zero, one. Um, if it is both 1 or both 0, it's 0. If it is only 0 and 1 or 1 and 0, it is 1. So this would turn out to be 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. So if it's the same number being XORed with the same number, then it's always going to be 0. That's how it clears it. So this is going to ensure that ESI is set to 0. And then down here, we are going to do compare ESI with 4. And we're going to do jump if not greater than to this push 0, which is 401 to BC. And it changed that jump if not greater than to jump if less than or equal to. So now, if we put a breakpoint right here and run that, oh, we can't do that, but uh, we'll set the origin here and run it. Do an analyze, there we go. And Ollie noticed that, hey, that's going to be a uh, loop. All right, well, XOR ESI, it's zero. Does a message box, calls message box, we get it compares ESI with 4, it's not less than or equal to, or it is less than or equal to, so it jumps, but wait a minute, ESI is not being changed. Well, we should probably fix that. Let's do INC ESI. Then let's do compare ESI 4. Jump if less than or equal to uh, 4012 BC. You might look at that and be like, jump if less than or equal to that, that, no, no, it's, if this ESI, if the compare is true for ESI being less than or equal to 4. So now, if we analyze, Ollie sees it again, and we're going to see that it goes through, we get our message box, increment ESI is going to add ESI to 1, compare it with 4, it's not, it's going to keep going through and we're going to keep getting message boxes, I'm going to put a breakpoint there and run it, and we keep getting them until ESI is 5. There we go. The reason it goes to 5 is because it's jump if less than or equal to. Uh, if we wanted it to stop at 4, we would get rid of the E and just jump if less than. But I like equal to. So that's a loop. Um, I think that's enough for today. Um, just because we took a lot of setup time, I'm going to save those. Open. Yes, overwrite it. And I'm going to exit. And now, if I were to run asm.exe, you'll see that we get five message boxes. Thank you for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe.